Hey guys, today I am going to talk about probably the number one problem of carrying magic as a store. <laughs> it's going to sound crazy, but it's Amazon. Like Amazon is the price they have on sales. Again, a lot of times people will watch this video and there's not a sale. You can wait for a sale. There's Christmas sales. Every holiday has a sale. Trust me, they're not withholding from you. They want to sell the Crimson Val, Dominaria, Neon, Dynasty, and the uh, new Compena, right? These are relatively new sets. Dominaria actually is the second oldest, or second newest set in standard with the Brothers War just coming out. So luckily they didn't sell Brothers War, but would it shock me in the future? Uh, probably not. Now, in terms of how low are the prices, you know, I we buy boxes for 90 and anytime you see a draft, uh, we buy draft boxes for 90. We buy set boxes for about 90 free, a little bit over. That includes taxes, shipping, that's like the delivered fee. So it's 90 uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a draft, it doesn't really matter what series it is. Now, some of them, like Commander Legends, they do tend to be more expensive or have less packs. Just keep that in mind. But for a typical standard set, it's 90 a draft and 90 free a set. Now, Collector's Edition, we pay $12 for or 144 a box, um, just about. But our box is a little different. Our box comes in, you know, blisters and so on. So it's not like a giant box of them. It's individuals which are in my opinion easier to sell so yeah those are the prices anytime you see a draft under 90 dollars uh you can understand that's a pretty good deal because that's the price that your store is not even able to pay for it uh for the fat packs and so on, i mean it's basically a general sense i'm just going to use the two products that are most common draft and set uh collector again you know, there's not, I mean, it's the same thing, the same margins, the same issue. So I said, I'll just say this, there's no rhyme or re, there's no actual way for you to make money if your customer base is just gonna buy off Amazon. You would have to really, you know, sell sleeves, play mats, dice, whatever it takes to make up that difference you know, when a when you buy for 90, you probably need to sell for at least 100, 110 to break even on carrying the product and also having a play space. You know, magic is very different. A magic collector is very, so not only are magic, so Pokemon boxes are also about 90, 86 a box and they don't go on sale on Amazon ever. It's, it's difficult. I think a lot of store owners need to come out and speak about this issue because I don't know. I mean, these numbers should be the same across the board for most people. Maybe there's a difference of a dollar or two, but when you have Dominaria for $80 on Amazon that draft, you have Neon D Dynasty at 70 a draft. You have Set Compena at 80 so you have basically Amazon, you, you have draft at you know 70 to 80, then you have set at 70 to 80. <laughs> well, if you're paying 90, 90 free, it's hard, you know, it's hard being competitive. And even Alpha Investments, his numbers that he was giving are not very competitive uh, if you just wait long enough. And you know, you wait long enough, Brothers War will be on sale on Amazon for Christmas sale or whatever other sale they want to say. I mean, these sales, you have to understand, like, you can just wait, guys. It's not in, it's in Magic the Gathering's best interest, and you can follow their Twitter account to sell on Amazon. But for the store, if you decide, hey, I want to play Friday Night Magic, I just want to be, I, it's hard to compare it to Pokemon, where the majority of people who buy Pokemon cards, they actually don't play Pokemon cards. They just open the packs and they either leave or they take the boxes home to open later on. So in terms of, you know, what other, so not only is the game store, and I think this burden has to be offset by Wizards of the Coast. My biggest criticism on Wizards of the Coast is very simple, is that they 
put the burden of the gameplay of building the community on the store. When in fact, that's really only beneficial to the game. You might be like, oh, the, the uh, store benefits from it. Yeah, slightly, but remember the store has the rent, they have the overhead, they have the heat or the AC, they have the internet, they have to hire an employee to be there where you know they could close shop early on Friday. It's really hard to justify this type of expenditure, right? Like the more you look at it and the more, I, I really do hope most store owners do break down their numbers and come out public. It's never been profitable for me to sell boxes. And I know people say, oh, what about sing singles are incredibly volatile. And to train a person to sell singles when there are like eight different piles of singles, like the, uh, the dude on Wizard of Coast, yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard, right? You know, there's, it's it's you know the difference between a serialized number card and a non-serialized number card could be ten x, and without the right trained employee, they wouldn't know the difference. So when you train an employee to buy or sell, there are very minute things because like it, I think it was easier for stores when there was a foil and a non-foil. Okay, that's easy to train. You can train a normal high school uh, employee or a college employee how to identify a foil from a non-foil, right? And the different additions. So that's basically it, right? Hey, this is the addition. Uh, you know, obviously seven edition would be brutal if you sold it for like whatever the news core set is. And this is the foil versus non-foil. That I think is reasonable. What is not reasonable is the variance and all the different things that we have today and the foil. Over. I mean, it's, I just don't know if you don't play magic, how do you even train somebody to sell magic or buy magic? Because there's so many mistakes. I mean, Goldspan Dragon, the, de the Delta and difference in that card is tremendous. And actually the more crazy thing is the more expensive the card, right? The more rare the card or the more playable the card, the difference, the more, the bigger the difference between different variants of the card. So the best cards that you want to take in, they're the actually most dangerous cards for a new employee who doesn't really know what's going on to buy. So on one hand, you definitely want those cards, but on the other hand, the employee, good luck, right? Good luck employee. I'm just telling you how it is. You know, a lot of stores are still doing Pokemon heavy and they're going to turn down magic. If, unless something improves, I just don't, mathematically speaking, I just don't see how a store can operate. Like, just the math, guys. If Amazon is selling the second to most recent, again, you might be like, oh, well, you sell a lot in the beginning. That could be true, but um, it definitely decimates your current. So, like, at, at some point in time, you're still expecting. If Dominaria United is in standard, you, you still kind of want to sell some of that stuff, right? Uh, and it's a cash flow, <coughs> is a cash flow issue. There's a lot of issues. <clears throat> and it's been raining all day, so I think I'm a little sick. Anyway, hi guys. <laughs>